Hi folks, Cold Warrior 78 here again. Uh, not out in the woods, today's subject is rain barrels uh, 2.0. If you remember from my other video, uh, I had a stack of rain barrels <clears throat> that I experimented with last fall. Um, learned a lot from doing that particular project and it was workable but it wasn't optimal, I guess is probably the nicest way of saying it. So uh, what, are, what we're doing now is we've redone <clears throat> the structure to hold the rain barrels. Uh, I dug a hole with some footers in it. I'll show you that in a minute. Um, let me show you what I'm doing right now and uh, explain what uh, what changes we've made. Now behind me, you can see this is the structure that uh, is gonna hold the rain barrels. Let me zoom in on that for you so you can see what I'm talking about. So the structure that you see down here is two by sixes, it's all pressure treated. These are landscaping timbers. They just hold the, uh, the barrel steady so they don't wobble. There is a two by six directly underneath each one for support. Now I want to point out something very, uh, very important to you guys. When you look at this, uh, this is only going to be three barrels wide, obviously. And there's a reason for that. There is a reason for that. When you look at the structure of anything like this, uh, you've got to seriously consider how much weight is going to be carried by these structural members. Now in this case, each one of these this five gallon drums is going to weigh up to about 500 pounds. <clears throat> Depending on exactly how big you have it, what kind of suspended solids might be in the water, that kind of stuff. Uh, so anywhere between 480 and 500 pounds, you got three of them going across, that's about 1,500 pounds. That's about the limit of a two by six. These barrels are about two foot across. If you were to go four of them across, that's over eight feet, uh, that's that would be 2,000 pounds in that case. That's more than a 2x6 can handle. Okay, um, I'm an engineer. I've done the structural numbers on this thing. This is as wide as you can go. So if you're going to copy what I'm doing, please do not make it wider. Don't make it any taller either. Uh, my scheme is to create three of these racks, and uh, I'll put 4x4s four in the corner. I'll show you that a, a little bit later when I get to that point. Uh, again, I've done the calculations on the columns. Everything's fine. The way I'm building it right now. Don't go taller. Don't go wider because the stress is involved with 500 pounds per barrel. <clears throat> can go back and bite you in a big ugly way. Anytime you are not stacking these things directly on the ground or directly on a concrete block that's laying on the ground, uh, any kind of height You've got to be very, very careful. Do not do anything that's going to hurt you or your family because 500 pounds of barrel can cause a lot of damage. Okay? So, safety is always an issue uh, and you can't just discount it because, hey, I saw somebody on YouTube do this. <laughs> that's a lousy excuse for hurting somebody. Okay? So, anyway, uh, two by sixes on the bottom. These landscaping timbers will uh, hold them so they don't rock back and forth. <clears throat> they also supply a little bit of support here to the sides of the barrel and then there's a 2x6 down underneath here. Let me show you how I did that. Alright, so structurally again, here's the 2x6. You got a frame, you got the member that's underneath the barrel. As you can see in the back there, uh, it's been put in with a joist hanger and then I also put two screws in from this end. So that's about as solid a connection as you can make. Uh, those uh, construction irons, those joist hangers, uh, very simple to use. If you don't know how to use one, ask. Uh, but they're really pretty, pretty simple and they're tremendously strong. They'll make this thing uh, carry its maximum weight and that's exactly what you need with a big heavy project like this. All right, we're now looking into the hole uh, the leveled out space underneath my deck <clears throat> where the uh, uh, barrels are going to be. And you can see that line in the back along the foundation. That was the, uh, the level of the dirt when I started. So it was some dirt. It wasn't a tremendous amount of dirt. 
Notice that there is on both this side and on that side concrete footers. Okay, again, these are designed to transfer the weight of this structure to the ground in a stable and safe fashion. If you don't know how to design footers, ask someone who does. Uh, in my case, because I have a bunch of dirt over here that it would come crashing down uh, in a rainstorm, uh, I built a small block retaining wall. I'm going to get some more rebar and uh, fill in those channels in the middle to make sure that's uh, extremely stable. Uh, again, if you don't know how to do block, it's really not that difficult, but uh, you don't want your first project to be something that's, that's significantly structural. Uh, you have to tie in at the footers. You have to have some uh, uh, foundation, either bolts or, or uh, foundation ties. And then, like I said, rebar and things that come from the top all the way down. See, so you can see where they're mortared in there, all the way down, and tie into the thing on the foundation. All right. It's not terribly complicated to do, but if you've never laid block before, getting it all level, getting it all even, uh, can be a bit of a trick. Now one little uh, handy construction trick. Uh, with these barrels, you'll notice that right in here in the middle, from the one edge through the bung hole down the center to the other bung hole, there's a nice seam there. That is absolutely straight. <coughs> so if you're gonna do something like I did, and you're going to put your support down here, make sure that that lines up all the way up with your seam. That way you know that the weight of the barrel is going to be resting on your support. If that was off a couple inches to either side, that would be a really bad thing. Hi, Cold Warrior 78 here again. <clears throat> I uh, wanted to take the, uh, the, the back end of this video and change it a little bit, give you a, a an epilogue, so to speak, <clears throat> of a six years after we built this, has it really work? So stand by, let me show you what we're doing. So what you see in front of you now is the completed system uh, as it looks uh, six years after the construction video that I was showing you. Uh, you see the same design, three, three, and then up here on top, three more. All right, all supported by that 2x6 frame, 4x4 four four is here in the corner. I'm going to show you a detail of that in a minute. Uh, the barrels are fed by uh, two different 2-inch uh, pipes. This one goes to where one of the rain barrels before was. This one comes off of another one. I'll show you a detail of those in a minute. All right, so here's what the system looks like. Three rows of three, all stacked on top. Let me give you some close up so you see what we're really talking about. All right, so <clears throat> behind me you see some of the structure. Four by four verticals. Uh, I put a, uh, a level on that just the other day. They're still plumb, uh, just like they were when we built it. Uh, that tells me that A, uh, I built it <laughs> square and plumb, which is important, and the footers, more importantly, were designed correctly. There's been no shifting in six years with all the rain and all the other issues. Everything's still plumb, square, level. And, uh, and you need to make sure that A, you build it that way, and B, you check it when you're talking this kind of weight, uh, at least annually to make sure it stays that way. Uh, now, let me give you a little detail on the construction here. In the back, these are bolts go all the way through the uh, the two by four and the four by four. All right, got those in each one of the joints. <clears throat> That's what holds it all together. Uh, you saw the two by six frames before. Move that over a little bit so you can see that. Uh, now these, uh, let's see, get up a little farther where you can see what we're talking about here. Da, 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 come back out. There we are. Okay. Wonderful production values here. All right. So what I, on the uh, outside end, this is the, if you will, the outbound side. Uh, I'll show you the how it all gets into the rain barrel in a minute. Uh, most of my plumbing was done with two inch PVC. Then I necked it down to a three quarter ball valve. And then 
uh, I ended every one of them with a short piece of, of PVC and then just a three-quarter thread on the end of it. Um, one of the things that uh, <clears throat> I got comments on before was uh, this, this whole pump system. I'll get to that in a minute. Just, just uh, uh, let me get get the other things done first. Uh, but my because of my situation, uh, as I mentioned, I live on a hill, so water is collected off the roof. The roof is where the roof is. All the gardens are uphill, so I got to pump it uphill because I ain't dragging water uphill manually. Um, but let me show you how we collect it, how it's all been plumbed in. Some pluses and minuses to that that we've uh, discovered. And then uh, we'll get to the pump system before we end. Okay? So, hang on. All right. So, here are the, we're going to focus on the top row for the moment. The, uh, the white pipe you see here, that's that two inch, uh, call it a main for lack of a better term. Uh, that comes in from the first flush device at the other end of the house. I'll show you that in a little bit. Uh, so I got two inches because I wanted to make sure that we had plenty of uh, volume to feed the barrels. <clears throat> if you've never seen <clears throat> excuse me, the amount of water that comes off a roof when it's raining hard, and we get some very distinct thunderstorms here, uh, that's not technically a pressure thing because the water's just flowing in it. There's lots of empty space in it. But man, that volume comes in fast. Those barrels will fill very, very quickly in a big rainstorm. So the water comes in at the bottom, it fills up, gets to the top. Along here you see the uh, three-quarter inch overflow. Three-quarter inch overflow goes down here. I'll show you where that goes in a moment. Now, uh, successes and failures. The system fills great. It empties great. Uh, one of the issues that I had when we did this originally is uh, wanting to put valves on everything. Now let me show you kind of what we're doing here. All right, so some of the issues. When I did the first rain barrel uh, episode going on eight years ago now, uh, one of the design considerations <clears throat> was every barrel needs to have a shutoff. Well, when you're using two inch pipe uh, times nine barrels, uh, those barrels, um, ball valves, are ridiculously expensive for a piece of plastic. Uh, and nine of them gets unmanageably expensive for the kind of project we're doing here, realizing that budgets are always an issue. So I went against my better judgment on doing a valve at each uh, barrel. Uh, I did limit three barrels to a system, though, so that if anything happens, I only have three barrels to deal with instead of nine. <clears throat> and, of course, something did happen. I got a leak right in here. Uh, this goofy-looking thing is, uh, well, it's my own fault, and it, it always is, uh, really, when you think about it. Uh, I rushed the, pl the uh, plumbing. I was using, it was one of the last connections I made, and the glue just wasn't up to snuff. It was getting old. I knew it was getting old. I shouldn't have done it. Did it anyway, so it leaks. Uh, and it leaked for a couple of years, and I was not really worried about it too awful much. And then, over the course of the last six years, I have done probably a dozen different things to try to fix this leak. Uh, every product, every product that's on the market that says it'll stop leaks, I have used. Everyone. This last one here is that uh, flex tape from, I don't know, that guy that's on TV. You know, works on water, you slap it on a boat, and it, it's still leaking. Okay, it's still leaking. Now, the nice thing is, it, it slowed the leak. <laughs> it's just a little bit of a dribble, um, but it, it's a dribble. So the right answer is cut it out, redo it. Haven't chosen to do that yet. Uh, probably won't do that, quite frankly, uh, because when you live on a homestead like this, there's a lot of other stuff to do. And it works. It doesn't leak enough to dramatically affect the system, so I'm not going to worry about it. <clears throat> so when you do plumbing, and, and this is going to sound really stupid, but when you do plumbing, particularly PVC plumbing, make sure your glue is all fairly new. If it's been sitting in your basement for a year, eh, now the purple primer, that stuff lasts pretty good. But glue does not. 
that PVC glue has to be fairly fresh uh, every time you use it. And if you got the slightest twinge that it ain't working, go get some more. Stop what you're doing, go get some more. That's the lesson learned here. Now let me show you how this overflow part works. Because it looks a little, well, probably is a little more complicated than it needs to be. All right, so as we mentioned before, the water comes in on the two inch main, fills the barrels, barrels go up, they hit the overflow, and then come down. Now I was a little concerned about this to start with, but it has worked wonderfully so far. So if you think it's silly, well, maybe it is, but it worked. So if you follow that down, okay, that goes by the second row of barrels, which has its own main coming in, fills up to the overflow, overflow comes down. All right, the overflows meet right here and come down and, and form the main for the bottom row. Get that grass out of the way. All right, so the, the overflow from up, up above the first two rows comes down here, becomes the main for the bottom row. They come up, they've got their own separate uh, overflow, which is not attached to the other one. All right, and that just goes to boom, out here to the end, black flex pipe down in there, and it drains into a uh, French drain that I already had outside. So uh, the overflow from the first two systems fills the, the ones on the bottom. Now, I was originally going to do, from a plumbing standpoint, have the main down here attached to a barrel that's over here on the corner of the house. Haven't done that because it keeps these things filled. There's plenty of water coming out of this on a regular basis. So there you are, nine 55 gallon drums. Gives you plenty of water. Let me take a break and I'll show you where the water's coming from. All right, so first flush device. If you remember from Rain Barrels 1, this was where the first rain barrel was sitting. This is a block it was on. Uh, and I changed that to a first flush device. Here's the main that goes down to the barrels. For those of you not familiar with the first flush device, the rainwater comes down the downspout in here, fills this up with the, the first water that comes off the roof, which is typically the nastiest. Water gets up here, gets diverted. Now you've got cleaner water going into your barrel system. Uh, this all works with two things you got to keep in mind. There's a hole at the bottom end the water's got to drain out of. If the water doesn't drain out, the water just comes down here and goes in and you effectively have no first flush device. So it's got to drain by itself over time. <clears throat> Second issue, it's got to be watertight enough that the water comes up and fills this up so that it keeps going down. Um, and those are competing issues. You need to have a hole at the bottom so that it weeps, drips water out of there, but the rest of this thing needs to be tight enough that the water doesn't leak out, for example, here uh, and not ever get into here. That was an issue we had when I first built this. This is not a system. This is just some pipe that I got. Uh, and putting it together, uh, this is sewer pipe. I didn't realize it because I ordered it and they sent it to me. Um, it should have been the standard PVC pipe, not sewer pipe. Four inch sewer and four inch regular PVC pipe are not the same size. Uh, so I had to put tape at the top to make a seal. On the other one at the other end that feeds the, uh, the top barrels, <clears throat> um, that was bad enough that uh, it wouldn't seal and therefore the water would come up spew out right here we have great big old puddle on the bottom and no water was going down through the pipes so if you're going to do a first flush you've got to balance the self-draining and the ability to get this out and clean it occasionally uh, 
balance that against it's got to be watertight enough to fill up and actually do its job all right um, in reality I don't know that I'm going to do any more first flush devices because quite frankly I have not I've tested water with a bunch of different tests and I haven't seen a difference this is designed for my plants uh, we've got one for the chickens so I don't know that I'm going to mess with this rigmarole anymore uh, in fact, I'll show you in another video with an IBC tote. Uh, we're not. Um, but if you're going to do a first flush, remember you got to balance the um, how much water gets out of it versus how much water is going past it into your system. All right. All right. Now, again, top barrels. There's the main. Comes out and it goes way down the other end of the porch. And there's a first flush device over there. That's the one that wasn't working. Uh, for a very long time, so <clears throat> uh, this this whole assembly was dry. Uh, so if you're going to do first flush, make sure it works. Now the other thing to point out is you've got to have a drop. If you notice, that's not flush against the top of your, or I'm sorry, against the bottom of the joists. There has to be a drop for gravity to pull the water down. So. Uh, you can check your local codes. It's typically something like uh, an inch and 12 feet. But uh, check your local codes, find out what you need to have. Uh, but it's flush with the joist down there. It didn't flush with the joist here because you got to have that angle. Anyway, the water comes down here. Uh, now that I got the first flush device worked out, that works well. This is one of the reasons I didn't want to have like three quarter inch pipe or something because that's a very long run and when you're just dealing with a gravity system uh, something smaller than two inches is going to get uh, clogged up really really fast all right I promised I was going to talk about the transfer pump this little black thing right here is a 12 volt transfer pump um, I think I actually got that one at Northern Tool um, but you can get them at Harbor Freight, you can get them in a, in a dozen different places. Uh, 12 volt transfer pumps are used to transfer fluid from one place to another. Most of them are not, <clears throat> I say again, not rated for gasoline or anything like that. Uh, these are just water transfer pumps. Now, in my case, let me follow the your little green hose down here. All right. So green hose goes around, off camera connects to the other, connects to this little green hose here. Now, <clears throat> let me zoom in on this, show you how simple this really is. Through uh, the wonders of serendipity and modern manufacturing, the three quarter inch fitting that I put on the end there, which I was going to thread the hose onto, uh, if you just take a piece of uh, broken cutoff hose, which every, uh, pretty much every homestead has bunches of, it shoves right inside that three-quarter inch pipe, and it makes a uh, literally a watertight fitting right there. So that doesn't drip, uh, that doesn't leak. So in fact, you can see the valve is on right now, uh, and there's nothing dripping out of that. Now, I just filled up a, a big IBC tote, so I don't know how much water is left in here, but I'll show you how this whole pump works. Going back up to the pump itself. Let me come back out of there. Now, you'll see the switch. Let me show you the electrical side of the pump. All right, there's your switch. And it simply comes down to a battery. Now, the battery... Uh, <clears throat> it's a car battery. Uh, it's out of our van. Uh, we have a van which eats batteries alive because of an engineering issue. Uh, the idiots didn't know how to turn off something when you turn the key off. And uh, so if you don't run the van for five months or so at a time, uh, it will kill a battery. In fact, it'll kill a battery... When was the last time? Actually, a month. If you don't run the van for a month, it will kill a battery to the point that the battery will not start the car. So I happen to have several of that size battery now that uh, 
I can get them out, I recondition them, I fix them as best I can. They're not reliable enough to start the van all the time, but man, they get a tremendous amount of energy left in them, and you can recharge them solar or with a regular battery charger. Uh, and it, so this runs my, uh, my pump system. Now, uh, the top hose, doo, 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 right here, there we are, sorry. Top hose comes out, it's just, I've got it laid over top of the pipe there, and it goes to a post, and there's a little cleat that it hangs over, and it goes out front to, uh, in this case, uh, it's on an IBC tote that I have up front in the garden. All right, so let me just show you how simple this thing is to work. You have to make sure that the that your valve is on. All right, with a ball valve, if it's in line with a pipe, it's on. And then, in the case of the way this one is set up, simply come forward, and it's got a switch. So it's pumping water out of the bottom units, out of these three barrels down here, through the hose and up the hill to a, uh, uh, an IBC tote, a 300-ish gallon tote uh, that's up by my garden right now. And that's what we use to fill the water jugs, uh, watering jugs, to uh, actually water the garden. It is a little bit annoying to listen to. So with the chickens squawking in the background, uh, I've turned the pump off because it is a bit noisy. But uh, it has been running reliably for six years. Uh, it has pumped this system uh, whenever I needed it. Uh, it'll eventually wear out, or the impeller, probably that little uh, plastic dealy in there that spins around, will probably wear out. I'll see if I can get a repair kit for that. Um, but it's a solid enough system that I'm going to get a second pump just to make sure that I've got one. I already have a couple extra batteries because my van eats batteries for lunch. Uh, and so uh, the system is built in. I've got a solar panel I can uh, charge the batteries from. Uh, although in reality, I charge them off of my uh, uh, regular uh, battery charger. It's a 12 volt battery charger. Um, I think it's a Black & Decker brand. I don't know. It's, it's just one of the ones you can buy. In a, <clears throat> any one of the big box stores so uh, the battery will go for hours and hours and hours before it's got to be recharged uh, the pump will uh, pull power out of the battery in relation to how hard it's working so if I'm uh, say just moving the uh, the water a little bit uphill okay not too big a deal if I'm moving it to the maximum extent that the system is capable of it's going to draw more power and it's going to, going to kill the battery a whole lot sooner. Um, there's a whole issue about batteries and charging and how far down you can bring them and stuff. That's not what this video is about. Uh, we'll talk about that some other day. But anyway, uh, I just wanted to mention, uh, it put a new ending on the video uh, because the other ending had some goofy stuff because I hadn't worked with it yet. Uh, so, bottom line, six years down the road, it works like a champ. Uh, once I got the first flush things tweaked to the point where they're working properly, system works by itself. I just come out periodically and, uh, you know, move the hose from the pump up to either the IBC tote or I've got a barrel on the other side. Keep them full uh, and then uh, I get my, my water for the garden out of those two particular things. Uh, we are expanding our garden to a major degree, so there's more barrels going in. We're considering getting goats, putting them in over there, uh, in which case they're going to have a shed, they're going to have their own rain barrel system uh, because they need water too. All right, so uh, bottom line, rain barrels are a good idea. Uh, don't go overboard with these things if you don't know how to uh, engineer a solid foundation. Uh, keep them on the ground. Uh, I, I can't stress that highly enough. 
uh, don't do dumb things that are going to hurt you or your family or get you sued by somebody. Um, water's important. You need to have it. If you have a regular sized house, your roof will shed tons, literally, of water during the year. And if you can capture even a small part of that water uh, and put it for use in a garden or animals or whatever, backup drinking water if you need to, uh, obviously you have to wait, have a way to treat that water so that it's going to be safe, um, but potentially even drinking water. Um, make sure that you've got the appropriate filters and treatments and, and what have you to, to do that. <clears throat> but water is critical. You can't live, your plants can't live, your animals can't live without water. Uh, and rain, while it's generally an abundant resource in most parts of America, yeah, generally and most are probably good caveats, um, it's not everywhere. Uh, and so the more of an issue you have with being in an arid environment, absolutely, uh, the better rain catchment system you need to have. Uh, my dad gave me some sage advice way back when I was younger. Don't burn out your well pump trying to water your garden. Um, and that's probably sound advice because well pumps are really expensive. Um, so catch the rain. Now, uh, this isn't the complete project. I've got more sections of roof that need to have either gutters put on it or some sort of catchment system put in below it. Uh, we're always in a state of flux. We're always improving. Um, we're always fixing things that didn't work the first time. But the only way you're going to know if it worked is to get out and do it. Uh, I would imagine today, if you did an internet search, at least a hundred videos, probably several hundred on how to do rain catchment systems. Okay, fine. Just go do, and that way you'll learn. So it's Cold Warrior 78 saying, get back out in the woods, enjoy yourself. Bye.